Sparkles, glitter in my hair, natural glitter in my hair. Okay. Graceful. Okay, hi everyone. I'm April and you're watching the Tangled Cat Speaks. It's Sunday evening. No, no, it's not. It's Monday evening. Monday. I'm a day late. Um I didn't podcast yesterday on Sunday because I was still working on dang it, I still forgot to grab them. April Davis, start over get up like 80,000 times and I still don't get what I need. So it's Monday night and I didn't podcast yesterday because um, I had just a few decreases left on the second toe of my two color socks and um, I really 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 wanted to get those done and I just couldn't do it. <laughs> um, I got them done, but I was tired and it was late and I just didn't, didn't get to it. And then t I went to work today. I got off work and I got distracted by other things some more. So I didn't podcast earlier tonight. So it's almost 730 in the evening. But anyways, I did get my socks done and I was able to post them in, in all of the little sock threads. Um, I did the Brown Bag in It Sock Club, um, the um, Hohe Fall Cow, and in Grocery Girls. Um, so, yay, I got, and please don't judge because I did wear these and they're kind of full of cat hair. <laughs> but I got them both done, see? Yay, I got two socks in there. Obviously, like I said, I wore them and I haven't put them back on the sock, sock blockers to show you, but I got them both done. Um, so these are the two color socks by Hohe Locatelli. And this is three Irish girls. Let me get some better lighting. Three Irish girls adorn. This is the cognac color. And this is Nerd Girl Yarns, their Bounce and Stomp base, and it's Eyes Bright, Chins Up, Smiles On. <laughs> I have to always think about that one. It's such a long name. Um, so I got it done. The only thing that I didn't do, because <laughs> I'm kind of lame, um, was the, the texture patterning that she had along the front of the sock. I didn't do that because I kind of, once I did the heel and I started going back in the round, I kind of forgot. <laughs> so then I thought, oh, I'm gonna do it when I get to the end of the gusset stitches. That didn't happen. I forgot again. <laughs> um, and then when I thought, okay, well then I can at least do it um, on, the, on the toe color you know, the color change would be a perfect spot to start the texture change, and I forgot again. So I didn't get the texture in. So they're soft, flat, stockinette. <laughs> but I still like it. I think that it turned out well, especially considering that the one color is a variegated yarn. Excuse me. It's, it's really, you know, you can really still see all of the lace because it's light enough and it kind of striped and pulled but I love it and they fit perfect um, I did what did I did 72 stitches I'm loving them super pretty yay um, I did, haven't worked at all on my softness cardigan, 
the lace cardigan that I was telling you I was going to do like a fade kind of um, gradient on it. I haven't worked on it. I still have the very beginnings of the yoke. It's a raglan. Um, I haven't even touched it. Um, but as soon as I finished these socks, I had to cast on something. So the first thing I thought of was the yarn that I showed you that I had dyed myself um, with food coloring and it was the, um, it's all cake, they're both caked up. It's worsted weight yarn. And these were the ones that I dyed with, it started off with avocado, but it was too light. It really was only like a creamy, creamy tan. So I added the Wilton's food colorings in the royal blue, the copper, and the brown colorways. And it came up with this really pretty variegated yarn. Um, and they came out pretty similar. Um, well, at least they looked like that in the skeins. Um, but now that I've got them caked up and I've started something, I'm not sure. I think they'll be... They'll be similar, they're definitely not exact, but I'm okay with that. I'm just excited to play with it. Sorry, I got everything twisted because what I'm doing are some mittens. Um, so I'm doing them in tandem. I believe I told you that I found a whole bunch of um, needles and other knitting accessories that I had been given years ago and or you know some that I bought and I just seem to have tons and tons of really long, I think these are like eight inch DPNs. So I had enough of this one particular size. These are a, a US size five, which I think is a 3.75 millimeter, I'm not positive, but I had a bunch of them. So I'm knitting these in tandem so that I don't have to, you know, keep too much track of like note taking and everything to get the second one correct. And so I don't get, is that a thing? Second mitten syndrome. <laughs> it doesn't, it doesn't flow as well, but that's what I'm doing. I'm knitting them in tandem. So that's why everything's kind of tangled right now, but I'm really loving how, let's see, this side is probably how the colors are kind of starting to spiral. Oh, I'm loving it so much. I'm so happy that I decided to use those colors. And I'll have to put the name of the mittens that I'm using up here because I can't remember right now. But that's what I started on. So I'm only that far. So there's that. Um, the other whip that I started is also for the Hohe um, Fall Knit Along. I signed up for three things. Um... I signed up for the two color socks, which I just finished, and I signed up for the Ley Lines shawl, but before that, I want to work on this other one that I signed up for, which is the three color cashmere cowl. Now, I'm not knitting it in anything that has cashmere in it. Um, where is my bag? I am so disorganized tonight, my goodness. There it is. So, I did start it. Um, the pattern called for... It's all wonky on the 16 inch circular, but the pattern called for a 3.0 millimeter and I didn't have a 16 inch circular in that size. So I went down to, I had the choice of either 3.25 millimeter or a 2.75 and I decided to go down and use the 2.75. So that's what I got and so far that, and the only other modification that I did was it called for 160 stitches and I went ahead and cast on 174, no, 172. And that's only because the frugal person that I am, even though this is Knit Picks yarn and it's not crazy expensive, I'm still frugal about my yarn. I think I told you I want to knit every single inch as I possibly can. So I went ahead and just, I was using long tail cast on and I had a lot left so I went ahead and added 16 more stitches to that so so I'm up to I went from 160 to 176 so that's what I got so far I'm pretty sure that's going to be the only modifications that I'm going to need to make and I think I'll have plenty of yarn even though I'm I went up so many stitches because one because I went down a needle size and 
too because the pattern called for 200 yards per color and each of these is 231 yards. So like I said, this is Knit Picks. It's the Stroll Fingering and this is Dogwood Heather. And I've used this before in a beanie that I made. Um, it was a beanie of my own design called Sweet Adeline. I talked about that early on in the podcast. Um, so I really, really like this color. It's like a salmony, peachy kind of color. It's not quite orange, but it's definitely not pink. It's really soft and delicate looking, really pretty. The other color that I'm using is um, Agate Heather. And this is kind of a taupey grayish brown. I don't know why they called it agate, because when I think of agate, I think of a really colorful stone, you know, and you see them cut on the crossways and you can see all of the rings inside the agates. I This is definitely not as colorful as what I have seen agates to be, so I don't know why they called it that. <laughs> but who am I to judge on names? <laughs> so that's the second color. These are the two that are going to be striped. And then the third color I'm using is the Duchess Heather. And it's a very pretty purple. So this is going to be that one section of like the pop of color. So that's what I'm doing. I think it's just very, very pretty. I think they're colors that I probably wouldn't have thought to put together before. But seeing them on my shelf, I was just like, oh. That's pretty. <laughs> There's one section that one of the colors is used in a lace pattern and I couldn't decide if I wanted it in this one or this one. So I had my son choose and he said to do it in this one. So that's what's going to happen. <laughs> but I'm still here. It's still a baby. Hasn't grown up yet. So I'm working on that. And then I also started some socks because it's October 1st. And I pulled out my yarn for the October Brown Bagging at Sock Club. And I pulled out this. This is also Knit Pick Stroll. I don't have the tag to this anymore. But this was, this is called Dandelion. Like a lemony yellow. Kind of looks sunflowery in this screen, but it's a little bit brighter than this. But it's not quite like neon highlighter yellow either. It's just like a sunny lemony yellow. So, and it was, I've only, I only had the 150 gram skein and I, I knew that I was going to need a little bit more than that for a pair of socks. So I found um, this other yarn. A while back I bought, of course I bought tons and tons of Pandia's Jewels yarns, but she was, she for every now and then she sells these, she calls them Color Me Happy Kits. And there are five mini skeins of yarn. And by mini, that's not really mini. They're more like half skeins. Each one is 50 grams. So there's five 50 gram skeins um, of coordinating and contrasting colors. And one of the, I bought several of these kits from her <laughs> over, the, over time. But this one was called the Rogue. And it came with two shades of blue a gray and like a greenish blue kind of and then a brown so I took the brown from there and I thought that I would pair these two and I didn't know what pattern I wanted to make but I'm gonna be doing some sort of striping um, contrasting I think this is gonna be the this is the heels and cuff I'm not sure which one I want to use I'm sorry toes and cuffs I'm not sure which one's going to be the heels, um, but I'm going to stripe them. And at some point I want to do a little bit of, there's a pattern, a stitch pattern that is in one of the Barbara G. Walker treasuries that I have that kind of looks like, like bees. I can't remember the exact name of the stitch pattern in the book, but I'm going to try to modify that into a lace band of bees going around the leg so it's only going to be on the top part um using just the yellow 
So it's mostly going to be striped and then a lace of the solid yellow. So I'm trying to work that out. Um, I did already start the toe because I already know what stitch count is good for my foot using this kind of yarn. So I'm using the 2.25 millimeter DPNs. These are the same ones that I just used on the two color socks. Um, so it's the same DPNs, but this is my toe. I did the Judy's Magic Cast On, um, and there's a video on here on YouTube, and I apologize, I can't remember the name of it, but um, the one that I found was for specifically Judy's Magic Cast On for DPNs. Because I think most videos that you see out there are on Magic Loop. I don't like Magic Loop, so DPNs it is. Um, duh, what am I talking about? It was Chemnitz. She has a video tutorial. Um, what very rare knitting tutorial. She's got only got a few of them, but it was, um, Judy's Magic Cast on and she used DPN. So that's what I was using and I've got my stitches all ready to go and now I'm going to start striping up the foot and I'm trying to decide if I want to do two row stripes or if I want to do four row stripes and my heart is telling me to go four row stripes but I don't know <laughs> I think I'm gonna go with four that's just that's like the first thing that came to my head was I want a little bit wider stripes but I feel like deciding where I'm gonna wear and um, which color I'm gonna use for the heel will be easier to do if I have less stripes to deal with per color. So I think it'll be easier to just go with two stripes or maybe I was even maybe thinking just one row of stripes, but I really don't wanna do one row of stripes because then it's just not really gonna be as noticeable. So I think even though it's gonna be a little bit more challenging as far as color placement, I think I wanna go with the four, um, four row stripes. So that's the other project that I'm working on. So I've got mittens, a cowl, and socks for October. <laughs> and at some point I'll get back to my softness cardigan. <laughs> I don't know. I don't, I don't make any prom promises with that one. Um, but it's sitting there right here in my pretty bag just waiting to be played with. So there's that. Um... Speaking of Chemnitz, creation, Chemnitz, um, she has her Etsy shop called Chemnitz Creations, and I've mentioned her before. She does a lot of um, dyeing experiments on her YouTube tutorials, um, and it's mostly her experimenting for new techniques and stuff new to her, um, and most of it was always food coloring or, you know, different, different things. Um, she's just now getting into commercial acid dyes and um, I think she even uses ripped dye and just a bunch of other things. But anyway, she does these experiments to learn more about how to dye yarn, different ways, different techniques, different types of dyes. Um, and she, she just documents all her, her experimenting and learning, um, on her channel so that's I just get a kick out of it I love watching her and I think she is just the most adorable person um, I love okay this is what I really love one of the big things that I really love about her and I was telling my mom this the other day is um, she is just who she is and she doesn't ever try to pretend that she's not I mean she knows that she's experimenting she knows that it could go crazy wrong and she'll end up she could end up with something she doesn't like, but she just takes it with a grain of salt. And she's just happy to be playing with yarn and playing with color. And sometimes she's just, she cracks me up the most. So when she starts laughing at herself, like all out belly laughing at herself and she doesn't edit, edit any of that out. And I love that. I love that. So anyways, a while back, and I can't even remember how far back I had ordered this that she died um, with, food coloring and it was a um 
dip dye. This is, I think she did this also on Knit Picks Stroll Bear Yarn. But she, it's, it's a really pretty teal and I don't remember which dye or which color she used. It's been a while, but you can see that there's a lighter end. It's kind of like a gradient and it's um, lighter on one end. So I bought this and it's been sitting there and I wasn't sure what I was going to do with it. I had not a clue. And then, oh my gosh, she was playing with um, Rebecca from Chemist. She was playing with some another brand of food coloring that she's not too familiar with. And I think it was called Americolor. Um, yeah, that's, that's what's on the tag here. Americolor and their food colorings that are shades of gray so you know and of course it, this was like an icing coloring so that you can um dye frosting for cupcakes and stuff like that and they'll turn out gray however when you use food colorings to dye yarn they tend if um, the colors have more than one component i guess they break if you if you put it in certain certain conditions such as a high vinegar content and I guess the grays have reds blues and yellows in them so they break into all sorts of ways and she used all six different shades I think it was five shades of gray and a brownie taupe color she used all five shades on the one yarn and just kind of randomly placed them and they ended up it ended up real speckly but because like I said, these colors tend to do what's called breaking. They split into their individual colors and ended up with this pale bluish undertone. And then you've got browns and darker teals. And that there's even some light hints of magenta. And oh my God, I saw this. And then she, as soon as she put it up on her Etsy shop, I was there. It's like, boom, send that to me. Cause oh my God, I love it. Like there's just blacks. Like they look, it looks almost black, but I think it might be like a really dark brown. But it's just so pretty. Like, oh. I love it so much. So then when I got it in the mail the other day, I was like, oh. I know what I'm going to do with the teal yarn. I'm going to pair them together. And I even know what I'm going to do with them. I'm going to use these to make a pure joy shawl. It's the pure joy from Oh Hey Locatelli. Um, the only decision I have to make now is which one's going to be the main color. <laughs> I love them both so much. They just go together so well and it just trips me out that this is from food coloring like it's just beautiful I don't know why it trips me out because you see me I dye my own yarns with food coloring myself but it still amazes me this is one of the ones I did it just amazes me that food coloring can do that <laughs> so there you go so I ordered that and then last night I ordered something else, but I'm going to, I'm going to preface this, this one. Um, last night I couldn't sleep. I was up till about, I would say 1230, just after midnight. I could not shut my brain off. It just kept going and going and going. And it was all because of yarn. I had ordered some um, speckled yarn from Hue Loco. I also love and the color on the monitor was it looks very minimal like it's mostly a bare base or a very lightly colored base with just hints of speckles of blues and greens and um, browns and it just it looks very minimal like there's hardly any speckling just very soft so that's what I ordered well, when I got it, that's not what it looks like. And I'm not complaining by any means. It's still beautiful. I ordered the Oak colorway. And it's on the spun sock. And I have tons of this base. I think I have like seven or eight different colors. 
And so I had a specific plan for the yarn th that I saw on the screen, the very minimal. I was going to use it with another yarn, another colorway called um, Master of Disaster. But when I got this, it looked a little more, there was a little more color than I expected. And I still think it's absolutely gorgeous. Like, gosh, Ugh, I love it. But the idea that I had for it kind of changed. Like, it's not, not a bad thing. Not at all. Like I said, I'm not complaining. But that's the reason why I couldn't go to sleep. Because my mind was just like going a million different directions. And I have been wanting to do the Slow Curves Shawl by Hohi Locatelli. Um, and like I said, originally I wanted to use this with only one other color. But when it came in... I pulled out all my other spun sock, like I said, I think about I have about seven or eight different colorways and I pulled them out and I found five that I think I want to make the, I just said it, the slow curves shawl. Um, so that's the, that's what I was doing. My mind was trying to go over and over in my head what these colors were going to do. Should I use those or should I use this? Should it be more of like a gradual fade or should it be like colors that are very dissimilar and just blended because of the way the shawl is made or should it just be very subtle? I don't know. I, I was going, I couldn't stop. It was just stuck in my head. I couldn't stop thinking about it. So I was up very late last night unintentionally and I went to work today quite tired but that's okay it was it was cool I ended up coming I think I came up with the five colors which I'll show you another time um I'm just dropping stuff over here um but I'll show you the co five colors that I've chosen when I get closer to actually working on that shawl which isn't going to be for a while but acquisition and I love it I do still wish that a uh, she that I had gotten like if it was possible to get one of each, like one like this, because I really do love this. It's just not what I was expecting. I wanted something a little bit more subtle. And I love this, but I think I would have loved it the other way too. That's okay. I'm perfectly happy. And it would it actually would have been really cool to get one like this and one very subtle and use those together. This is, see, this is my problem. I keep thinking about things and what ifs all night long. What if this and what if that? And oh my gosh, and I just couldn't sleep. <laughs> I'm probably not the only one who goes through this. <laughs> so um, I did start um, The Labors of Hercules by Agatha Christie. I am, I'm actually still only in the forward, about to get to the first story, but... Um, I forgot how much I like this story. It's this is an an interesting one. I think it's it's basically um, Hercule Poirot is just trying to decide whether or not he wants to go and retire from being a private detective and just stay away from crimes and go and plant a garden in some small village live in a small village in a small cottage and have his own little garden. And, but part of him is like, okay, maybe just one last hurrah and I can do a few little small cases, kind of like the labors of Hercules, because as arrogant as Hercule Poirot is, he may not physically liken himself to Hercules, but mentally and his mental keenness is Herculean in his mind. So that's that's what this whole thing is. So I just got through the forward and he's explaining to, um, I believe it's a friend or a doctor, I can't remember, you know, um, oh yeah, I'm gonna just go do my my, my gardening. And he's the doctor's kind of like, are you sure? I don't really see you doing that. So now we're gonna get into the first story. So I'm very excited about that. Um, but that's all I got and I will see you guys next time. Um, I'm going to stop saying, um, because it's time for me to go <laughs> when I get back to my chamomile tea and I will talk to you guys all next week. Hopefully it'll be Sunday for sure. Should be for sure. Cause I don't have anything planned that day.
but you know how life goes. No, no promises. <laughs> but thank you for visiting with me and spending a little bit of time with me this evening. And I will see you guys again. Bye-bye. Hi, everyone. I'm April, and you're watching The Tangled Cat Speaks. Um, dang it. <laughs>